Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. I'm Pastor Pete. I hope you are enjoying your Easter week and you're looking forward to celebrating Easter Sunday and Jesus' resurrection. Seems like the world is totally committed to discounting Jesus' resurrection from the dead. There's all kinds of TV specials that come out. Who is the real Jesus or what really happened on Easter? And they always have these different perspectives they're trying to present on what could explain away anything miraculous happening on Easter morning. Uh, one of those uh, are talks about how Jesus maybe really didn't die. Maybe on the cross he just kind of fainted and then they buried him. Um, and that's why the tomb was empty. But then you have this really difficult question to answer. How did an almost dead man manage to wake up inside a tomb and then roll away a gigantic stone on his own without any of the guards noticing? It doesn't make sense. Or um, another theory is the mistaken tomb that the ladies on Easter morning went to the wrong tomb and it was an empty tomb. But the hard question there is, well, why did Peter and John also rush to the wrong tomb? And why did they find grave clothes laying in this empty tomb? These are all like logical questions. When you hear some crazy explanation of the resurrection, you can say, well, but what about this? That doesn't really make sense. Uh, another theory that tries to explain away the resurrection is actually found in the book of Matthew in chapter 28. And it's the idea that somebody stole the body. Somebody stole the body of Jesus, and that's why it looks like he was resurrected. Let's read about this theory that was hatched way back on the day of the resurrection. Matthew 28, verses 11 through 15. So while they were going, so while the ladies were leaving the tomb, behold, some of the guards went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, here's the lie, tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. So... The lie is, just tell people that the disciples stole the body. Um, other lies have been uh, invented since that time. Some people say that the religious leaders stole the body of Jesus. Other people say that Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, who owned the tomb, stole the body of Jesus. But this idea of a stolen body doesn't make much sense either. If the religious leaders stole the body, why didn't they produce the body once the theory of his resurrection went wild and people were believing it all over the world? Um, why would Joseph Arimathea steal the body? Um, he obviously cared about Jesus and had offered his tomb to be the spot where Jesus would be buried. And then the disciples. Think about how scattered and fearful they were after Jesus' arrest and his crucifixion. And think about them then somehow being emboldened enough to uh, risk arrest by Roman guards and to steal the body. And then even more ridiculous is the idea that they would die for this lie. Because as we know, at least 10 of the apostles went through gruesome death because of the truth of the resurrection, because they believed it wholeheartedly not because they had hatched some conspiracy to steal the body. So this Easter, as you celebrate, remember that you're celebrating the truth of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's no other explanation than a miracle happened on that Sunday. Have a great week, Calvary.